Hello guys, how are you? Thank you so much for making the time to be here with us today. Uh, whether you're watching live or watching the replay, we know that these are different times. These are new times and uh, more people than ever are starting businesses, more people. Okay. And I, I remember when I first decided that, um, the last time, okay, because I decided many, many, many times that I was going to start my business. But the last official time was the end of 2011. And in 2012, I had my, maybe 2012, 2013, I talked to a bookkeeper, which is very scary. And I had her set up my, my, uh, my accounts in QuickBooks. And I, when she said that, to be honest, I had no idea what she was talking about. I had no idea what my options were. She was, setting things up, but I think she knew too much, to be honest. I think she was great, but because I was such a newbie, she couldn't dial it back. You know, like when you know, you know too much of your own subject and you don't know how to talk to people that are like infants. So, and I did not know what to ask. So I overpay on some things. I never even asked um, my accountant what questions to ask. And I know that because when I met Yolanda, and this is, she's going to introduce herself in a minute, when I met her professionally, because I already knew her, but when I met her professionally, she asked me all these questions, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we were shopping for accountants, because I, I, I was looking for a new accountant, she was so gracious to come with me, and you should have seen her. She was just like firing off the questions, and and she's like, no, don't hire that person. Okay, this, let, me, let me just find you somebody, okay? And she just took over, which I so appreciated. And then she was talking about reports, all these things that I could do myself and my responsibilities that I did not know of. So what I want us today to do is, again, let me know in the chat where you're watching from today, why you're here, what questions you have, and we're just gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna let her introduce herself and um, then we'll just, I'll ask her questions and we'll just go from there and then we'll go to the chat and see how we can help you. So without further ado, I am gonna um, let Ms. Jolanda uh, take it over. Well, thank you, Catherine, for having me today. Um, my name is Jolanda Huertas. I've been in finance and bookkeeping approximately a little bit over eight years. And I've been in different, several types of business in nonprofit and um, LLCs or um, inks. And now with you, I took on the challenge and more knowledge of entrepreneurship and all the different types of stuff that you guys do. So I, I took on the challenge and it was awesome and a great experience. So that answers that, that, that one right there, so. Yeah, that's awesome. So we have your, um, your, your information there on the chat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can grab real quick your Facebook page. What's the name of your business again? Uh, bookkeeping done easy for you. Let me find that. I know that, but I, I always get it. I always mess up. So I'm going to invite you guys to go to her Facebook page and like it because she's doing different things there. So um, she's got a, a really great articles on people that um, be, ha, gotten laid off. This information yeah. about that, about your check, um, different grants and things. She's she's not kind of like up to date with all that stuff. So definitely go like her page because she's she's keeping she's keeping uh, up with all the changes, all the things that we qualify for that we never qualified for before. Like I'm learning. I'm talking to so many entrepreneurs that don't never qualify for anything. And now mm -hmm. like, you know, we're, we're, the world is going through this thing and they are, things are changing. So let's just mm -hmm. go right into it. Um, let's talk about for people that are in your experience, what has been the thing that you wish people knew if they're starting with their business that would save them time or money when you get their books? As I know you do people's mm -hmm. books, like when you get the books first, what's your, the thing that you're like, Ay, 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 right? I, I think that the bookkeeping industry was so like underground for a long time that it wasn't important. And they don't realize the importance of a bookkeeper. 
whether you're in starting in business like today, if you started business 20 years ago, I'm hoping you started with a bookkeeper. A bookkeeper and a CPA go in hand in hand. They, they're like two, two sets of eyebrows, uh, two sets of tires. You can't change one tire without the other. So a bookkeeper and a CPA have uh, a lingo, a verbiage, an understanding of how they can come together to maximize all of the benefits as a tax portion of it and keeping your, your business organized. Um, a, a CPA is more indulging and knows more about the taxes and the write-offs and that's more their expertise. I'm not saying that they will not take on the bookkeeping part of it, but the charges and fees of a, book, uh, of a CPA are obviously higher in they're more expensive versus a bookkeeper. A bookkeeper you want because the bookkeeper is going to hold you accountable. A bookkeeper is going to say, um, what's this? What's that? And it's going to ask you questions. So at the end of the year, you're not running around going crazy trying to figure out where is this, where is that, and, where, and, and whatnot. So they, they're sisters. They go together. And if the chemistry is perfect, I think that it, 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 the sky's the limit when a bookkeeper and a CPA come together and understand the vision and the mission of the business. That is so powerful. That's something that I never, I never thought about. But when you started helping me finding a new bookkeeper, a new accountant, you were talking, you, so you are of the belief that the accountant and the bookkeeper should know each other, even if virtually, and should be familiar with the business. Why is that? The importance of it is because, you know, at least from my sense, I'm a very passionate person. I like to see the extremes of the multiple revenues that you're coming in, especially for an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is selling books, is doing webs, is doing um, talks, is, is going here. So when we go into a, a software system, regardless of which one they're using, they're all, there are many out there, but they all are very similar in, in the ways of how things are being recorded. The bookkeeper, at a minimum cost, can help you strategize, can keep you within budget. Now, it, it can keep you organized. It keeps you um, in, in, in a place that if you wanted to maximize your potential of how much money you want to be, your bookkeeper can understand the lingo of a CPA. So mm. there, what would take a regular person without being disrespectful, a regular person that doesn't understand the accounting lingo, because they have to use different strategies, use different wordings, it can take up to an hour versus with me, it can take a 10 second email for them to say, hey, um, can you get me this? Can you get me that? And we can understand it versus, and then the CP is gonna charge you, you know, at her price. If she's kind, she'll try to say, you know what, it was under 10, 15 minutes, I'm not gonna charge you. But every time a CPA charges you, they're gonna bill you. So. The, 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 the analogy behind the CPA and the bookkeeper understanding the business is because I need to know what's the goal, what's the mission, why, you know, just because we don't have a, a physical address or we're not in one building doesn't mean that we're going to treat entrepreneurs, uh, freelancers, or sole proprietors, anything different than a big corporate company. We need to understand what's your goal, what's your vision. So the bookkeeper and the CPA can sit down and say, um, what's the goal and how can we maximize the time efforts or, or maximize to savings for you so that you can make whatever figure it is that you're looking to make. So powerful. I remember when you were asking me, you know how many books I have, and then you were asking me, okay, are the books set up in, in QuickBooks separately, and mm -hmm. how did this book do? And then I was looking at you like you were asking me for a calculus, you know, um, equation or formula, and I love what you said. If you know how each book is doing, then you know how much effort to put mm -hmm. into that book you know yes. if that book is being uh, successful or even if it's been profitable. So okay. how, how important it is for, for the accounts, and if you can explain what accounts are, to be set up properly from the beginning. 
So the way that it's properly um, set up from the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, is that people go online, they do a Google search, which you, I think you call them your cousin or friend, something like that you call it. Um, so they go on Google, they see the cheapest version. I'm going to use QuickBooks in this way just to maximize. And um, they'll, they'll see that QuickBooks is on sale. They're going to do um, the cheapest version of it. And all of that, it's, it's limited. It's what they say out here is uh, you pay for what you get for. So when you pay for the, the cheapest version of QuickBooks in this, in this case, you're not going to be bringing in the type of reports that you're looking at. If you remember when I first sat down with you, we looked at the price that you had and we, we slightly bumped it up a little bit on your QuickBooks just so that we can maximize the type of reports that you're able to get. The higher you go in the QuickBooks, um, fees, if you want to call it, you are able to um, create different charts of accounts, which is a lingo that CPAs and bookkeepers use, um, or you can use it by um, classifications of class. That way, if you have every, every uh, QuickBooks subscription has a limit of how many uh, chart of accounts and classes that you can have together. So you can, you don't need um, separate bookkeeping um, softwares if you can classify it differently. Like if you're doing books, I don't need to get another QuickBooks for your speaking engagements. I don't need to get another QuickBooks for your, um, your master classes. You can have all of that within QuickBooks. With a proper bookkeeper, you can classify everything differently and see like, like you just said earlier, you're able to see what's bringing in revenue if you are able to classify everything differently as soon as you send out an invoice you have in a class section of what this is for and your if any expenses that you may um, um go that you are spending throughout you're able to classify it against that specific that specific class and you're able to see okay um this book made this amount well, do I want to continue or do I want to stop it? Or am I going to get other resources, any other marketing tools that I can use to bump up the sales on that? So yes, it is important to, as soon as you're able to get a QuickBooks um, or any type of software and a bookkeeper, you know, I think one of the best strategies that um, Catherine and I were able to do, and I'm only using her as an experience so that she can bounce back with um, some feedback, is that you're able to sit with your current CPA. Your current CPA is probably charging you the maximum that she's charging you because she doesn't want to do the bookkeeping part. So if, when you bring in a bookkeeper, if you don't have one, the best advice that I can give is for the bookkeeper to sit with the CPA and of course yourself and be able to strategize and say, if I take these responsibilities from you, can you reduce this? Because again, you are able to build a relationship with the bookkeeper where you're able to ask questions. You'll have a more of a relationship with the bookkeeper where you're able to say, hey, at Saturday at two o'clock, can we talk really quick about the books? And you're able to have that. There will be that, that accountability with the bookkeeper where a CPA, to be honest, they don't want to deal with this type of stuff. My, our, I've dealt with CPAs, different types of CPAs. They're all knowledgeable in their areas of expertise. And the last thing that any typical CPA will tell you, the last thing I want to do is deal with QuickBooks. They do it because they know that some people don't want to bring in a person that knows bookkeeping. A lot of people use a spreadsheet. If I personally don't think as a business person, to use a spreadsheet if it's something that you're doing now i would say contemplate on investing on bringing in a bookkeeper being honest with the with the person that you're interviewing and 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 go with what is best a lot of people are going with these online bookkeepers and it's great if it works for them but i think I, i'm a i'm a relationship type of person i'm a person that likes to see i like to talk i like to understand your business so that i can maximize your revenue because at the end of the day the more you make the better we all are in this business i love 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 that i never thought of the fees that i was paying the bookkeeper versus what i was paying the accountant i remember that for years and it pains me to think about um and i think she discouraged me from made it kind of difficult to hire a bookkeeper 
and I can see now why, but I would have benefited so much if I had had someone that was doing every month, for example, like when you asked me about the reports, I didn't even know when we, you know, when we interviewed that first book, uh, accountant and oh, yeah. he was talking about the reports and then you were like you can pull those reports so mm-hmm. knowing your numbers let's talk about that for a minute and again welcome everybody that's coming in if you're coming in here late we're talking about bookkeeping one-on-one and how to maximize those relationships when it comes to the reports and knowing your numbers we talked a little bit about and i love this part before i forget you mentioned that for every item if you have a code or you classify it well, when it comes mm-hmm. as a sale comes in, you can allocate, I love that, you can allocate an expense to that specific item. Correct. So at the end, you know exactly what the profit is. Can we talk a little Correct. bit about that? Uh, definitely. Um, I work with several companies that that's, that's, that's their main goal. They want to know every week, what did I make, how much I went. And it's, it's for this one particular company, it is essential. That is one thing that they want to know exactly what's going on, what's coming in according to that classification. At the end of the day, you need to know what, how much you're making. Because if you're not being profitable, then we need to figure out why you're not being profitable. It's easy to say if you're not keeping track of your transactions, your expenses, your income, it's easy to say, well, I, I just invoiced this so-and-so, 7,000. Oh, I can spend this, 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 and this. And when you're not really looking at it, then that's when you become more of a spender than a saver. And if we're in business, and whether it's you know by yourself or with somebody else the end goal is to be able to be profitable to be able to expand to be able to um, and make investments in different areas that you that you are particularly wanting to and if you're not sitting at least minimum at uh, once a month with a, a bookkeeper then i i don't know how successful somebody can grow because at the end of the day you're you're limiting if i may say the capabilities of you growing your business because a one man person can't do it all you you know if i can take away um the responsibilities of you checking your bank account every time to see how much you have and take away from you the responsibilities of allocating all of these things versus that's going to free you up to grow your business that's going to free you up to you know do whatever it is that any person is doing whether it's sales whether it's selling books whether it's speaking it's going to open you up so at the at, at the beginning it always looks like well why why would i want to bring somebody else in if i'm so small at the end of the day it's you're bringing in somebody else but it's a, a somebody else that is very important to your business that's going to help you understand. And it's going to help you, uh, in a sense, hold you accountable. Do you really need to spend another $300 on a laptop? Um, that's, the, that's the key of a bookkeeper. The bookkeeper becomes kind of like your wife where she's nagging at you, you know, mm-hmm. Why are you spending that? Do you really need to, especially if your numbers are low? If your numbers are high, then, you know, there's a lot of more freeway of how much you can spend. But if you're a beginner at this point, we want to be a little bit tight so that we can squeeze as much as money as we can so that we can put it into an, a savings where we can grow the company and not so, so much focusing on, 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 on spending. Because when we think, of, oh, I'm, I'm my own business owner, I have my own business, it almost feels like now I, I can spend now. Now I'm free to spend. And we end up getting ourselves into debt and instead of making money. So it, to me, the sooner you can get a bookkeeper, the sooner you can get a software system in place, um, it is essential. So powerful, so powerful. I remember one year, I was saying that in my Facebook group, one year um, I got together with my accountant at the end of the year, even like in February of the following year. And that's when I found out that I spent $19,000 in training. Mm-hmm. That was a little too late because if, if I have been keeping track and running reports, mm-hmm. I would have known to, like you said, can, can I afford to buy this? Because because the money was there. I had a job at the time. So my job allowed me to just pay for my life and pay for my business. So mm-hmm. I didn't really care. I had the money. 
I had it, my business did not have it. Correct. So had I met with my, with my bookkeeper earlier, I would have known to stop, but because mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I overspent. Correct. Yeah, the bookkeeper is going to hold you accountable because if you and I sit down and you say, Jolanda, I don't want to spend no more than $2,000 on ads. And now I'm sitting on, on a weekly basis. I'm sitting in front of a computer and I'm saying, wait a minute, uh, you're getting close to your $200 on ads. Why you either need to, you know, bump up more or we need to figure out a way to cut that cost. So the bookkeeper is essential, especially if you want to grow your business in, in every shape or form. When I say grow your business, I grow, I mean revenue-wise, because we all wanna grow our business revenue-wise, means which means money in your bank, but we also wanna grow our business to be known, to be in different countries, different cities, different places, expand it to different areas of knowledge of what you already doing. So if you don't, have the money in there and you're breaking even that is it worth you know being in business because if you, you at the end of the day you want some money in in the side corner of the bank account where you don't see it and it's just growing that's true that's so powerful so let me ask you this i have we have a mixture of people that are watching now or watching the replay and some mm -hmm. of them are getting started others are established. When do you think a business owner should engage a bookkeeper? As soon as you, you get established. As soon as the minute that you are thinking about it, I think it is important to involve a bookkeeper. Um, it is important to set up your books at, ahead of time so that you're not I'm searching through things at the end of the year or in mid-year. I think a bookkeeper is, as soon as you register that name and you have income going out and expenses coming in, I think it's essential to bring them in, even if it's uh, uh, an agreeable amount of hours temporarily that suits the business. There's business who has a bookkeeper on a daily basis. There's businesses who have bookkeepers as needed or you know, once a month. It, it all depends on where your business is now and where you want to see your business because you don't want to be in business for 20 years and then bring a, bit, uh, a, a bookkeeper. Why? What am I going to be doing at after 20 years? At this point right now, trying to in, incorporate all of the years that you have, there's just no way to, to be able to track all that. Versus as soon as you get in, it, let me put it like this. I'm cheating myself out by saying this. Even if you sit down with a bookkeeper, set your books up and, and create cheat sheets and how to have you use QuickBooks the proper way as you start up. And then eventually bring in the bookkeeper once a week uh, and then twice a week. And then as you grow, but it is essential. I think if you want to be able to maximize at the end of the year, the time that you are investing into your tax preparation. Um, I have people who right now are running all over the place trying to figure out where did I put this receipt versus the bookkeeper and you or the business owner can put a system in plan where she will help you be organized and have all of these documents within the software in itself where you're not having to run around and look for these receipts at the end of the year or trying to find something. So I think it is essential for have, to have a bookkeeper as soon as possible. Powerful. Um, talking about all the things that are available for business owners. So I'm seeing people not being able to apply for grants because their books are non-existent or because they don't even have uh, QuickBooks or something. So what are a few reasons why people should have their books up to date? Like what are the benefits of having your books? You know exactly where you are. Okay, so as a, uh, if we're talking about a business who has multiple several employees, that's, that's a no-brainer. If you don't have a QuickBooks, I really don't know how it's being done at the end of the year with the, with the CPA. I don't know, and I, I, I want to stay away from that. But if they're doing it, amen, good, great, that's awesome. But if you have several employees, the way that right now there was a company that I had to file for their PPP loan, and it's based on the amount of salary that was projected for last year. So we had to pull out several reports, whether it's through QuickBooks or their payroll company. So either one of those two, it, 
QuickBooks, I'm saying QuickBooks, again, it could be any other software, that if you're allocating things correctly, you should be able to pull reports from the system in itself and be able to qualify that. You have to submit something that it's, um, that it, it meets the requirement in order to apply for the loan. There are people who have commented to me and tried to apply for the loan and they got rejected because they didn't make X amount of money. And they're like, well, I know I made more than that, but if you can't prove it, hmm. there's no way to submit any documents. So anything within QuickBooks or any software, um, accounting software, for the most part, any reports from there, it's, it's 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 um it's it meets the requirement of a of a loan so if you go to a bank and you want to apply for any type of loan whether it's a business loan whatever the first thing they're going to ask you is for a profit and loss and if you can't pull out a report then that's where the problem begins so or starts that way you're not going to be able to get the loan versus everything being in quickbooks all you put out is uh a, a profit and loss, and there you go. That's what that's what it is. So anything from a software accounting system, any bank accepts it, from my understanding, at least. Wow, that's so powerful. So looking at, so you, do you recommend? I think you mentioned it earlier, but I just want to go back real quick. Looking at the report, so what reports should entrepreneurs with employees or no employees? What reports should they be looking at on a regular basis from from their from the uh, um, for their from their software. Oh, well, the first one that everybody looks at is a profit and loss. Any everybody, if you keep it simple, if anybody can read a profit and loss report, that is the first one that everybody looks at. Now, like we mentioned earlier, we can get into more details, and more details obviously just that tells you, um, you know, exactly more than what a CPA needs to know. That's more beneficial for you. That is more beneficial for you to understand and what, what is really bringing me money versus what's bringing me a loss. Um, the other one that is very important is a balance sheet. A balance sheet tells you what it's a, kind of similar to a profit and loss, but the balance sheet is basically right going into what, what came in and what came out. A balance sheet is what's used most for the most part for the CPA. A, a CPA would say, can I get a balance sheet? And from the, without getting too much into detail, you know, at the end of the year, you have to submit everything that's in the balance sheet. Every, if it's a bank account, if it's a credit card statement, anything in that last one is what you need to submit. So those are the two most essential. Again, uh, any software, uh, accounting software is going to allow you to detail the QuickBooks or the reports that you're lo looking for. If you're looking for a report by, like we mentioned earlier, by classes, you those, those are more a little bit more customized. If you want to see a report, how much you made last month with it versus the month before, what month are we in? April, end of April. Um, so that, now if you want to see how much I made in April versus what I made in March, those are also within uh, accounting um, software that you can do or vice versa. You can do it how much I made this year so far versus how much I made last year around approximately this time. And those are all within reports that can be pulled from the software that if you don't have one in place, you're going to not want, you don't have that comparison unless you're really that detailed. And if you're being that detailed with a spreadsheet or written by pencil, then my question is, how much time are you investing in, into growing your company? Yeah, awesome. Let me ask you a question because I was talking to a friend. I, most of my friends are entrepreneurs because that's what my life is. Um, can a bookkeeper help you with paychecks? That's something that I was um, talking to a friend and she pays herself. So she gets an actual paycheck every single week and mm -hmm. she pays taxes. Uh, taxes are taken out of her paycheck every time. Uh, so how important is that for entrepreneurs as opposed to taking like an honors draw? It is important because at the end of the day, you are separate from your business. So you're basically saying that, you know, it, it would benefit you more to pay taxes now. With payroll, you can do it either way. You can do it for the most part through the, quick, um, through the uh, accounting system. You can set that up versus going through a payroll company a payroll company where you involve i would i i kind of say they get a little bit pricey just for one person 
So it all depends on how much money you're making and how much you're willing to 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 spend. The reason I say um, it gets a little bit more pricey with any type of payroll, but whichever you use, even if it's into a payroll, they are the ones. If you set it up, which is, it will benefit for you to set it up where the payroll company, whoever it is, takes care of the EFTPS, is the weekly. Um, the weekly taxes that need to be kept, the quarterly taxes, and the year-end taxes, annual taxes, like other call it. Um, so your your best interest would be that if you're going to go to that extreme of paying yourself, then you might as well have um, whoever's doing the payroll do that, do pay those taxes for you. Because if not, if you don't have what we call a full-time bookkeeper, are you going to remember, oh, wait, did I pay the EFTPSs? Oh, wait, my quarterlies, are they due? What, you know what I mean? So instead of you adding more stress to yourself, you might as well um, hire a payroll specialist, whether it's into it, you know, paychecks, whoever it is that, that's doing it. And yes, most bookkeepers at this point, especially if they have the experience under their belt, they should be able to work properly with any payroll um, company or specialist or whatever they call it, even if it's with Intuit or um, what do you call it? Paychecks, what's the other one? Um, PDA or something like that. So whoever it is, a, an experienced bookkeeper should be able to know what to do with it, with it when it comes to um, payroll. Um, however, like I said, just because we're not experts, on the part of taxes. I want to emphasize that. Bookkeepers may have some knowledge, but I want to emphasize we are not experts when it comes to taxes or um, what are the requirements for taxes or how to keep up with taxes. Though That is mainly the main focus of a CPA. That is why I said a bookkeeper and a CPA they're both to, they work they have to work together because they'll keep me posted with the new regulations that are changing every year or whatnot so bookkeepers are not experts but they are they can work with them and if the bookkeeper is passionate enough or is an independent bookkeeper like in my case we will do some research to make sure that we're doing the right and proper thing if somebody's working for a company then obviously um, that's all incorporated with the CPA and the payroll specialist. But us bookkeepers, we that are independent, rather, um, we don't know a lot about the law, and the law changes all the time. So we, we would suggest that if you are going to pay yourself through a tax-paying company payroll, is for them to take over that whole, that whole area, and then the bookkeeper keeps track of the payrolls by doing what we call journal entries. Okay. Wow. That's so awesome. I, that definitely makes more sense when you suggested that you meet with the whoever I hire as, a, as an accountant, because mm -hmm. you guys really are like a duo. You yes. really work together for my business. So thank you for explaining that because that really kind of connected for me why it was so important for you that you kind of not only i thought you wanted to like the person but now i see that is deeper than that that you really want to work for my with my, with my money correct correct if i may, may jump in it, it, it's not so much about me liking the person again i you know i i want to emphasize not because of myself but because it's in general, when I speak about bookkeepers, we're talking about bookkeepers in general. If someone knows more than what they should, it's because they took the initiative to go to to go further, educate themselves. But basically, we are we are in the, what we want to say. We just we just enter information and and allocate it and whatnot. But we become more familiar with the bookkeeper to specialize, save money to the entrepreneur the the freelancer the subcontractor whatever it is we try to make them as uh, as a benefit for them um we we have to work with them because there are things that again laws change and we need to be in sync with them and have a great relationship with them where if i can get a 15 minute conversation for her for free why not if you don't have that relationship with them, book, uh, a CPA is going to charge you at CPA rate every time they charge they touch your books. They they charge your book for 15 minutes, not all of them, but they will submit you an invoice for an hour 
or half hour. So if I can be able to build a relationship with the CPA and say, hey, I know this, this and that. I know it changed. Is it, can you direct me in the right way? They'll be like, oh, yeah, Jolanda, just to click here and click there and you'll be able to get it done. Okay, no problem. And that, that's it. You, you're not going to get an invoice for that from the CPA. They may not send you an invoice, but they'll tack it, they'll tack it on your invoice at the end of the year. So if we can just minimize the, the, the communication with the CPA in the sense of how much we reach out to her, then then it's it, we we reduce your cost we we reduce your expense on that one so if you're paying eight hundred dollars i'm just throwing numbers out there um eight hundred dollars for a cpa and now you're bringing in a bookkeeper our first question was how can i minimize your eight hundred dollars but still with the quality of taxes that you're doing at the end of the year and then they'll say if you do this 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 and that jolanda i'll, I'll reduce the rate to 400 bucks but we still want to have some type of um fine line there or margins if we can so that we are able to contact them throughout the year if we needed to change something or if that something's not adding right my numbers ain't adding right at the end of the month because there are some months when we close out the books there's there's something that I can't see and I need a second set of eyes I'm able to call the CPA and say, hey, can you, you know, jump in here, take a second set of eyes and, and take a look. They're able to do that. And if you have a relationship and you get along, you'll be surprised how much free time you can get. I don't know if I was supposed to say that. <laughs> no, 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 that was awesome. That, that was awesome. And I can testify to that because when we went and interviewed that, that, that second accountant, you asked that question, like, um, almost like instead of talking to you, is there somebody that knows accounting and bookkeeping that I can talk to? And then if she cannot help me, can I talk to you? And I was paying attention and I was like, wow, that was such a powerful question. Cause I knew then what you were doing, you were trying mm -hmm. to get you answers without costing me too much money. And you even exactly. talked about, you asked a very specific question. Like if I use 50, how much time do we get? with that mm -hmm. fee and I love exactly. that because we're, and I know that different accountants charge different things but mm -hmm. in your experience what's the range that at least for this area anyway every state is different but for different bookkeepers what's the range do you know oh for for a bookkeeper we base it on transactions um it all depends on the amount of years of experience they have it all depends on what type of company you have how com how complex is your books so if it's an in and out type of thing you shouldn't be paying no more than 27 28 dollars an hour and it may seem a lot but our our job is intense like i said you know as we mentioned here it, it all depends how detailed do you want your book, your, your bookkeeping? If you want your bookkeeping, you know, just simple, just record this, this, it, it all, it all depends. I, I it, it's hard to say um, how much a bookkeeper should be making because at the end of the day is how much are you going to involve her time? Because at the end of the day, as we all hear about time is precious and time is something that you can't get back. So it, it's, it's, that is, I have to say, it's a really, hard question to answer to throw numbers in there in a sense of how little or how much i i've seen ads out there um just recently well because i've seen so many people get laid off or and, and whatnot um i like to every so often jump and see and i was shocked to see how people are actually suggesting hiring bookkeeper at 17 and i'm like what type of bookkeeping are you hiring for because that seems kind of low and in, in my in my opinion it seems kind of low now if you're saying that a bookkeeper is fresh out of school um then maybe that's okay when you have eight years plus under your belt that understands the 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 lingo understands some tax preparation the, then 17 dollars is kind of low so it, it all depends what it is that you're looking for um, how complex is your company? The frequency of how many? Uh, the frequency of how many? How many times I'm going to have to log on? And versus the CPA, the CPAs can go minimum. I want to say seventy eight dollars. If they want to be nice, again, they can reduce it based. It, 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 it's all like it's a relationship. 
If you're going to just be straight business, you're going to get people $78 and higher. If you have a bill, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm key and I'm passionate about building relationships because with relationships, you can get much further. With relationships, um, with a CPA or whoever, you can say, hey, things ain't that easy this month, you know, as you can see. You know, it's all negotiable versus you hire somebody over the online they're probably over there across the border and i'm not saying it's a bad thing but what i'm I, what i do want to emphasize if we're looking at prices i think that the more relationship you have the more flexibility you have in bringing the prices down if that makes any sense no that was helpful and thank you for comparing for comparing i know that it's not exact but that's a good range to mm -hmm. know so the power of knowing that if i spend more time with my bookkeeper I, I get to spend less time with my accountant and mm -hmm. then I'm spending less money. And my accountant uh, asked for that interview that we had, the second one, she was excited that you knew all that stuff because she knew all she will have to do is ask for the report and everything exactly. is done. And she loved that because she hates book, uh, uh, QuickBooks. That was awesome. Uh, exactly. You know, book CPAs are... Like I, it, it, it's, it's important to know CPAs, the essential of them is to help you strategize how to grow your business and how, for instance, if you say you want to make, I don't know, 150,000 and you're only making 30 right now, I'm just throwing numbers out there and you want to sit with a CPA in order to say, how much taxes will I be paying? if I make 50,000, that's their major expertise, you know, tax write-offs and things like that. But your bookkeeper can help you if, again, if you're going to hire a bookkeeper at $17 and no disrespect by no means, because I was there at one point in my life and it was a learning curve. So we couldn't, I, I when I just got out of, fresh out of school, I couldn't charge what I charge now because obviously I was just out of school. I was trying to learn the industry. So when you have that there, you obviously, they don't, it, it's, it's complicated. So from there, when you start learning the industry and you start learning the lingos, now you're able to say, you know, and you make the job easier. When you hire the right person, again, the relationship, asking the right questions, you, and you build it, you're making everybody's job easier. Everybody involved is their job easier. You can go do whatever it is that you do. The CPA can do whatever it is that she does and add more business. And I'm going to be able to do what I do and add more business or, or whatever it is that I do. So if we're all in sync and we're all doing our, our fair share and we all understand each other, then the sky's the limit. Right. Yeah, no, I love that. I so, so love that. So um, I want to open it up in the chat. I know that we have talked about so many things, so many things that I, I, I get excited about this because I, I nerd out on all this stuff. So if you can, I know we have a really healthy mix of uh, people that are starting, people that already have businesses. I know mm -hmm. hopefully you guys are taking notes because the simple fact that when you are ready and hopefully you are, I think, uh, Jolanda's right that you probably are already ready if you're bringing revenue on a regular basis uh, to get your stuff done, to get your stuff done and talk to someone. Because um, if I hadn't engaged her, I would have hired the first person, and that would have been a huge mistake. I hadn't, I did not know what questions to ask, and she saw the red flags right away. Great person, nothing wrong with the person, but the expertise was not there. When we met the second person and I told her, I love this. When I told her I was an author, she immediately, she mentioned a couple terms that I knew she has clients that are authors. She knows what she's talking about and she's going to find things that I'm not doing that I should be doing. So automatically I was like, okay, yeah, this is someone that I want to work with. So mm -hmm. whatever you need to do, have a consultation, talk to someone, see where your business is at. And uh, we'll let you know at the end how you can, you can get on Yolanda's calendar and talk mm -hmm. to her um, just to see where you're at because it will definitely make a big difference. So while we get Absolutely. some questions, is there anything that I, that I neglected to ask, that I ask you that you think is important for them to know? No, I don't think so. At least not right now. Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, one thing that I do want to ask you um, is paying, paying vendors and dealing with checks. That's something that um, I usually 
yeah, no, I don't have to send checks or anything, but I do know people that do. Is that something that a bookkeeper will do for, for entrepreneurs? Yes and no. I would say um, no in the sense because we don't have an official office. If you, are, if you have a business and I am able to go to your house and print the checks and, and whatnot, then yes. If you are totally virtual, where um, you are in Puerto Rico and I'm your bookkeeper because you left over there and whatever, then the best bet is to pay everything to, to PayPal or um, even what's this called? E-checks. You can do e-checks where you email them the check versus let's say if you're in Puerto Rico and I'm here and your bank account is in Puerto Rico, there's no way I can print the check here and send it to whoever. So that's that's the complex of the challenge being virtually, everybody being virtually versus having an, uh, an actual check. Now, if you're down the street and you say, hey, Jolanda, I need this check. Um, can you come by and print it? Because I don't want to touch QuickBooks. Then yes, you can do that. But if you're not, then everything needs to be paid via credit card automatic or pay it on, on a PayPal account or whatnot. And okay. um, while I have this thought in my head, I, I wanted to throw out there, there, there are softwares because we just got into the conversation of virtu virtually working remotely, working at a distance. The only way you're able to do that if you have um, QuickBooks online. There are, I don't know if other softwares offer desktop version. The desktop version means that it's an office. I would have to go into a specific location and that is the only computer that has the QuickBooks and I have to go in there. That type of QuickBooks, and I'm using QuickBooks because it's the one that I'm most familiar with, the one that I mostly have my hands on, but I'm pretty sure FreshBooks does the same and I'm pretty sure any other accounting software does it. But I wanna say, if you are looking for a bookkeeper that is remotely, you have to purchase the program that is online, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I'm going to reiterate what I wish I had known at the very beginning, because I don't see any questions, but I know that maybe when the replay go, goes out, you guys will have questions. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm going to post in the chat. You will be emailed the replay as well. If you, know, if you missed the beginning, um, I will encourage you to connect with Yolanda. That is the information for her. You're going to learn more about her, what she does, mm -hmm. all that stuff and set up your consultation with her it doesn't hurt to have the consultation, okay? Absolutely. Again, they were so, I was so afraid of QuickBooks because it, it was foreign to me. And even to this day, because I haven't spent time there, whenever she throws a term at me, I'm like, okay, wait, I'm a baby. <laughs> Talk to me like I'm a baby <laughs> because I don't know. And then she's able to break it down for me and explain it because I like to understand things. That's just the way that I am. So ask the questions. Like, what should I be doing? Um, just, it doesn't hurt to ask the question, okay? And even say, hey, I'm ready to set up my, my, my QuickBooks. Can you help me so I can do my part, okay? Because right now, she was not my bookkeeper last year, and now we are fixing the things that should have been done properly. And there are questions that she cannot answer because she was not in the company. She was not there before. So if she had been, those questions wouldn't be questions because she would have asked me right away or she would set things up right, right away. So mm -hmm. um, for, I can tell you from my own experience, my taxes for 2019 would have been done already if she had been doing my books from the beginning. I would have known uh, what my numbers look like and not mm -hmm. manually because I'm that person that because I did not know QuickBooks, I was keeping track of my numbers because my bookkeeper and my accountant never even suggested that I go check how I was doing and I would have made other investing decisions had I known what my numbers look like. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm gonna encourage you not to wait until you get your taxes done to find out how your business did. That's what okay. I did for years. And um, I would have, I think there will be, there would have been an urgency for me to make money earlier had I known that my last, that my, my job at the time was financing my life and my business. Mm -hmm. So if I had known that earlier, I would have made changes. I would have, 
I just had, I would have had urgency to make money earlier. So that's my, that's my own experience. Um, that's why I'm saying, talk to, to, talk to Yolanda, talk to another bookkeeper. That's why this is pitch free. We're not selling anything. We're exactly. just sharing because right now, uh, people are starting businesses and I want you guys to start the business early and do it right. That's why I'm doing these trainings. Yeah. I'm, I'm asking my friends to come and share because I, I don't want you to be afraid not to do it. I want you to do it, but do it right the first time. Exactly. Cool. Awesome. Well, I don't see any questions, Yolanda. I have put your information. Uh, please go, guys, and check her Facebook page. Uh, mm -hmm. Check the link to um, check out her stuff. And if you want to and feel ready, go and set up a consultation with her. Um, we will be sending you the replay tomorrow for everyone that got registered for this. And mm -hmm. just feel free to reply back. I will put her contact information there. Um, any final thoughts? Um, we are, we, I'm not claiming that the world is going through things right now. And <laughs> um, this is the time, right? Like you're doing this thing yourself. This is the time to go for it. This is the time to... You know, we we like to use the, the term quarantine. We all, you know, set home. This is the time to get your things straight. This is the time where supposedly the world is on a little standby. Um, so this is the time to, you know, evaluate. And this is the time to, you know, pause and think, is there anything different that I can do within my business? And definitely this is one that that we need to evaluate because, we don't, there's a lot of us at the end of the year looking for stuff that we shouldn't be when you have the right, the right systems in place, the right, the right plans in place. And, 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 and it, it, it's a perfect time. It's just to say that it, it's a perfect time. If you don't have one to bring one in, it's still, it's still early enough in the year to say what can be done. And again, like she said, you can always reach out ask me some more specific question and target it to your specific business because you know like i said bookkeepers and quickbooks are targeted based on the on, on the client and if i need to help you choose a bookkeeper because of the location that you're in absolutely i can definitely work with somebody who is looking for one and they need to know like you said what questions to ask Absolutely. Awesome. Well, okay, guys, this was the time. I want to keep it at the one hour mark. We're getting hit in there now. I want to uh, honor your time. Thank you so much for making the time for you. Um, I want to say I have wondered about all of this. This was very helpful. Awesome. Definitely watch the replay. If you missed it, we started right on like a couple minutes after six o'clock. Um, I am a huge business person. I love business. I love monetizing your expertise. Jolanda is leading by example. She's doing that. And that's why I asked her, will you come mm -hmm. to my community and share what you know? And um, it. it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't, I promise. It doesn't have to be hard. Um, you have questions, people have answers. That, that's all I'm going to say. People, I said it earlier in my class, people are spending money. People are spending big money now because people are mm -hmm. making money. And people are looking for the shortcuts. I heard a coach say the other day, the shortcut is in hiring a coach. What you don't know how to do, somebody knows how to do it it's, really, it's, really well. My dad, yeah. for example, he I ordered um, a uh, tripod for him. And the picture had um, this thing for the cell phone. But when he got it, he didn't have it. And I have so many of these. So I went to his house because, you know, that's what you would do when you have older parents. And I brought my, my little uh, face, a color of face, and it was not going in. And I'm like, okay, so if we shave it, because I was not going to come back. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> we're going to, this is going to work. <laughs> this is working. So we shaved the little, the little feet that he had and it worked. And he was mm -hmm. thinking about returning it. And then that means I have to return it. So I was uh, trying to avoid that. Okay. So mm -hmm. I made it work. And he doesn't know how to do tripods or anything. I do. I'm, I, I know all that stuff. So I'm saying that he asked me because he knew I knew. And mm -hmm. uh, it's the same way in what you are doing. Somebody mm -hmm. already knows. So don't reinvent exactly. the wheel. If it comes to bookkeeping, Jolanda's here. She's available. Check out her Facebook page. There's a link for the consultation. Don't make more money because you don't know how or because you're afraid of the ramifications again mm -hmm. she saved me 
from working with the wrong accountant for me. It's not a bad, not a bad person, just the wrong accountant for me. I wish that I, um, I'm glad that I brought her. Like she, she even, I didn't bring her. She offered, she said, hey, I'll come with you to the meeting. And she came to two meetings with me. And I saw the difference with the second accountant that she found for me that she has worked with before. And that was everything for me. So I appreciated the fact that the way she was she showed up today is the same way that she is in every meeting. She will be asking you questions. She will be like, no, how do we call corners here? Why do you do that that way? I have this question, I have this other question. And she's always like so nice about like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want you to ask me these questions. Like, because you're not doing it, it's not your money. You're doing it because you want me to do well. Mm -hmm. So you want someone to be up in your business in a good way, um, that's her. If you want someone mm -hmm. to just do things and not show up, barely showed up, then that's not her. I'm telling you right now, that's not her. She's not going to do it half, you know what I say. She's not going to do it half baked and not show up and charge you. She's going to be up in your business. She's going to learn your business, which I really appreciate. And she's going to make suggestions. Okay. Just like I make, I give you suggestions about software and things to do when it comes to bookkeeping, mm -hmm. she does the same thing. So I know that you guys care mm -hmm. about that. So if I wouldn't bring her otherwise, I don't bring you a lot of people. And if I bring you someone it's because I believe in what they do. And um, I know this training alone, it's pretty powerful and it's my gift to you uh, because I want you to do well. Thank you so much for coming, Yolanda. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy. Thank you for having me. My, my pleasure. Again, thank you guys for coming. The replay will be sent out tomorrow along with her contact information and um, just do your thing, okay? Just go out there and do your thing. Have a good night, okay? Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Night. Bye. You're welcome.